So in this episode, I want to talk about the 10 things I wish I would have known when I started my online business. So these are the things I would have said to the younger me, the Henry just starting out. So keep that in mind as you listen to this, because some of this will not resonate with you at all. So always default to what feels best for you and discard the rest because we all have an internal GPS system and the only way you'll know what's best for you is if you start listening to that GPS system and listening to your heart. So let's dive right into the first point, which is to be who you are without abandonment. So be who you are and embrace your story, your weird quirks and everything about you because you're here for a reason and you're here with what you have for a reason. It's here for a purpose. So forget about comparing yourself to others because you have your own path to walk. So you could look at popular bloggers or entrepreneurs and you could feel bad all day long but there's a reason you're not like other people. You're not supposed to do things the way they are doing them. And you know you're trying to be someone else because you feel frustrated, confused, and lost. That, those are good signs that you're not listening to yourself. You're not listening to your feelings or your heart. So you have to always default to listening to what feels true for you because your feelings are what will guide you down the right path. Now obviously you want to avoid listening to feelings like fear and those sort of things. So the guiding feelings are more subtle feelings. They are like whispers within our body and our mind. So when you calm down you can hear those whispers. Now, it's taken me a while to realize that the more I share of who I am, wherever relevant to my customers and clients, the more I allow them to connect with me. So, for example, it's taken me a long time to reveal some of the things I do, and I still haven't talked about all of it, such as how I use psychics and mediums to help me in my business. So I sometimes have sessions with mediums or intuitive coaches who help me drill down into the core of what's stopping me from making progress and what's stopping me from becoming a better person, becoming happier and feeling more fulfilled. So there's a lot of this stuff I haven't even talked about and I may go into this more in the future. And in a way it hasn't come up for me to share, but I, I think I've also been avoiding it. So I've not shared much of my spiritual side on meditation and how I use all of that to live a fulfilling and happy life while building a successful lifestyle business. Because you can read about all the tips and strategies you want, but those are essentially just on the surface. What really will help you make profound changes is when you dive deep into yourself, into the core of who you are, and change things there. That's what will help provide lasting change. Instead of just getting a tip, or a hack or something else. Now, those things are useful, but you can't forget about everything else. So we have to think holistically and we have to include all of who we are. So I got a bit off track there, but the first point is to be unabashedly you. Because you can only be who you are. And there's a reason you have the story you have. You have to share that story with your customers and clients and with people. Now, I've had a few 
clients and customers tell me that people come to them and tell them that their story is very interesting. People are interested in the challenges they've faced and how they've overcome those challenges. Now, if you have anything like this in your life, it's a sign that you need to share your story because it's going to help people. Now, the problem is that we often feel like our story is too mundane. And that's just because we're so familiar with it, because we're living our story. So just because you feel one way about your story doesn't mean that it's useful. Just because you have thoughts that what you have to share isn't useful doesn't make it true. So you have to test your assumptions and challenge your thoughts and fears and worries because what you'll discover is that often you don't know what will happen or what you need to do. So you need to embrace your story and background, your interests, your or the quirky aspects of your personality and everything else you feel excited about sharing. And I say excited here, but you will probably be afraid of sharing it as well. So the way I do this is I start by looking at a problem. So for example, let's say I'm writing an article and I want to help people solve a problem like where did they start when building a lifestyle business. So I use this problem as a starting point for sharing my story. So in this example, I could share how I got started, the mistakes I made, the worries I had, and what I went through. And then I could talk about what worked for me and what solutions I found, how I felt afterwards, and what I thought about all of it. So here I'm sharing my story in order to help someone start their lifestyle business and make progress. So share your story and if you're building a lifestyle business, share it in a relevant way because this is not just about sharing pictures of your cat or anything like that. Unless you have a lesson your cat taught you about running a lifestyle business or whatever you're helping people with. So in the beginning, it may feel like you're doing everything wrong, but just keep going, share who you are, and do it in a relevant way. And that brings us to point number two, which is time. And it's the simple fact that this takes time. So avoid quick fixes and avoid looking for shortcuts because the ultimate shortcut is no shortcut at all. Now, look at it like when you're learning an instrument. So let's take guitar, for example. In the beginning, you're just learning how to hold your fingers. You have to put in a lot of work before things start to flow. So your fingers will be sore from playing on the steel strings. You won't know how to synchronize your right and left hand. So it'll just take a lot of time to get even the basics down. And that's the same for building a business. You have to learn the basics and you'll struggle a lot. But after you start getting the fundamentals in place, that's when you can start focusing on more advanced aspects. But really, this takes time and usually takes longer than you think. And this is where most people have the tendency to look for shortcuts because they want to make progress faster. But don't do that because if you look for shortcuts, it'll just take longer. You have to realize that you can only learn at the pace that you learn and you're already doing your best. So just keep on putting in the work each and every day and you will see results. And again, just because you feel like you're not making progress doesn't mean that you're not making progress. It just means that you have a thought popping up that you believe and that makes you feel bad. Now, I still have those days where I feel like everything is going wrong, even though everything is going right. So what I do is I take a step back, I take a break, and I come back the next day feeling refreshed and everything has changed because my thoughts have changed. 
So we will have both good and bad days. That's just a part of this whole thing. Now, even if you go through and spend a lot of money on get-rich-quick schemes like I did in the beginning, I wasted over $10,000 on bad coaching, bad programs, and everything else, and I wasted several years. But I now see that it wasn't a waste of money or time because I learned so much about what didn't work that it made me so much more confident about taking action when I did find something that worked. And it showed me the power of focus. So let things unfold in the time they do and in the way they unfold. And when you do this, when you stop trying to force things and hurry up, you'll notice yourself relaxing. Because if you look back at your life, you'll notice that life tends to take care of itself. The problems start or the suffering starts when you try to force things or you try to change reality. Once you accept things as they are and stop trying to push and pull and change and manipulate, that's when you just relax. So that brings us to our third point, which is focus. So stick to one source of information when you're building your lifestyle business. Stick to one training course, one newsletter, and one person you trust. Someone who's doing what you want to do. Now, why would you want to do this when there's so much information out there that you could use? Well, for one, you'll make faster progress, it'll be easier, and you'll encounter less overwhelm and confusion. Because when you read several sources of information, you'll find conflicting advice. Some will say to write long blog posts, others will say to write short ones. Some will say that you need to do a podcast, others say you need to do videos. And they're all giving great advice based on what they have experienced. So this is why it's best to stick to one source of information because it eliminates a lot of the conflict. Now you may think that you're missing out on something, but you're not. If you try to read several sources of information and you bump into conflicting advice, you're missing out on taking action. You're missing out on implementation and you're wasting time because you're confused. And this is where resistance will come up. When you're taking action, Resistance is already there. You'll be the most afraid and you'll want to back away the most when you're taking action. And if you're getting conflicting advice, that's just going to make everything worse. Because you don't know what to do. You're frustrated, you're confused, and you're feeling lost. And most likely you'll just give up. So it's better to focus on one source of information and start one project at a time. So don't try to learn everything and do everything. Default to trusting your heart and following your excitement. Because there's always that one thing that excites you that you really want to go after. But often you're afraid to go after it because you're not sure if you're going to succeed or what's going to happen. You're afraid of what people will think of you or whatever your fear is, whatever the thought is that's holding you back. But that's where you need to go. You need to face your fears and worries and trust your heart and take action. So do what you feel compelled to do and forget about everything else. Now I know it's easier said than done, but when you start doing this, your life will change. So it comes down to learning what you need to learn to take the next step. So don't try to learn everything and try to plan out your whole business and your whole every every single step step because it's not going to happen. So let's say that you're just starting out and you don't even have a website up. So your first step would be to come up with what your website will be about. What kind of domain name do you want to have? And then maybe do some research on whether or not there's viability in that market. So are are people spending money on what you want to give them? And those are the only 
things you need to do in the beginning. Forget about product creation or writing blog posts or creating a good looking website because right now you need to focus on the steps ahead of you. Just a few steps and that allows you to focus. So be ruthless about distractions because they will come in, there will be new courses that come your way and they, there will be amazing offers that promise you that you'll make faster progress if you just get this one system, this one blueprint or something else. So how do you focus? Well, you determine where you want to go, what information you need, and then you get that information and you take action. At least that's my process. And that brings us to point number four, which is help. Get help as soon as you possibly can. So what do I mean by help? Well, I mean, get coaching and talk to someone that can answer your questions. If you can't afford to work with a coach, you can join a training program where you can get feedback on what you're doing so you can avoid some very simple mistakes in the beginning. So why do you want to do this? Well, for one, it'll help you make faster progress. Then you won't have to worry as much because when you're working with someone who's been where you want to be, they know the pitfalls, they know what to avoid, and they can give you tips on where you need to go. So you can focus on taking action instead of on what steps you need to take and if you're on the right path and if you're doing this right and a lot of those worries that people have in the beginning. And it also helps you focus on, like I said, on the essential elements because it's easy to forget what really matters, such as building your email list, having a sign-up incentive, writing blog posts in the right way to get people engaged and joining your newsletter and sharing your articles and all of these different things. And a coach or training program can help you put things into perspective and give you a framework. Now, not everyone can get a mentor. So there, it's hard to find people willing to do this for free. Now, if you just have a few questions there are always people willing to give you advice because I have people email me all the time, but most of them never get back to me. So I may give them something that they can use, but they never get back to me. They never take action on what I tell them. So if they come back, back after that, I'm going to be inclined to not give them any advice because they're not applying anything. They're looking for a quick fix. So if you're an action taker and you're willing to implement what someone gives you, they will be more than willing to help you on your journey. If you just have a few questions here and there, because it's very rare to find people who take action. If you can't get a mentor or find someone who will help you like this, another option is to simply pay someone. And that's something I've done with everything I've learned. So when I learned when I learned to play online poker, I got several coaches that helped me improve my game. And I did the same thing when I learned online business, although I bumped into a few bad coaches along the way, but it's one of the fastest ways to learn something. And even to this day, I work with coaches and consultants and like I said in the beginning, even mediums and intuitive consultants who help me tweak what I do. Now, another option is to join a training program and invest in yourself, a training program where you can get feedback and you can get a step-by-step -step process that can help you move forward. Now, a lot of people say that, well, you could learn everything for free, and that's true. You can find a lot of stuff for free, but like we mentioned in the point on focus, it's going to be confusing and frustrating. And especially if you're starting out, you won't know where to go or what to do because the information is scattered and it's conflicting. So yes, you can do this for free if you want to, but in most cases, it's going to take longer. It's going to be more frustrating and 
it's just going to be harder. So I can't speak for what you need to do, but what's worked for me is simply to join a training program and work with someone who's doing what I want to do. And that brings us to point number five, which is niche. So what is a niche? It's simply finding the thing you do, finding your place in the market. Now, I'm not going to say what you think I'm going to say, which is to find a niche where you can be the expert. Because in most cases, you won't find something that you want to do without some experimentation. So don't worry about, about it so much. Just dive in and follow your heart. Because a lot of people just say, you have to niche down, but sometimes it just isn't possible or it doesn't feel good. And if you can do that, if you can niche down and say, become the expert on growing bananas, then that's excellent to do that if you can. But for most people, it won't happen that way. For example, when I was starting out, I had to start, start off vague in the beginning. I just did personal development. And as I kept writing, listening to my audience and listening to my heart, I discovered what I wanted to do and what people wanted from me and what I could give them and what products and services I could create. So don't focus on strategies and tips. Don't follow them religiously because you always have to default to what feels good to you and what you feel excited about doing. And then you have to take action because that's what it all comes down to. You have to take action and you have to be willing to move forward before you're ready because things will get clearer as you move forward. There is no one way to do things. And just because people say you have to do something doesn't mean that it's right. It's just someone sharing what's true for them from their experience. And there really are no rules. You can see this if you, let's say someone says that you need to niche down. You can simply ask, are there people that are successful that haven't niched down? And the answer is yes. And there are people who are successful who have niched down. And in some cases, if you don't niche down, it may take longer. But in some cases, if you do niche down, it may also take longer. So always default to what feels the best for you, where you feel compelled to go and what you feel compelled to do. So do your best to find a problem. Do your best to find a niche where you can start building an audience and remember to take action. And talking about action, let's move on to point number six, which is to create a product as soon as possible. Now, I help people build an advice-based online business. And when I say a product, I'm talking about an ebook, an e-course, coaching, or something like a do-it-for-you service. So as soon as possible, release a minimum viable product or service to test the waters of what people want to buy and how you can improve what you do. Yes, you will have inner demons pop up, but that's just a part of the game. Because whenever you're do doing something new, your mind will rebel. You will want to stay with what's comfortable, but if you stay with what's comfortable, you will already have started shrinking and the walls will crush you sooner or later because they will start coming closer and closer. So you have to keep pushing your boundaries and when you do that, it's not going to feel comfortable. So why do you want to release a product as soon as possible? Well, you, when you do that, you discover what people are willing to buy and you discover how you can improve on the product you've created if it was something people wanted. So you can start something small. So start with an ebook or with an e-course or just a coaching package and then grow that into a course or whatever it grows into. So this is something I've done with 
pretty much all of my products. I've launched them in a very simple way, gotten people to help me improve them, add to them, and then they've evolved into courses and bigger works that I then sell and that help people. So how do you do this? Well, you start by building an audience, listening to what problems and frustrations they have. You can do a survey, you can read your comments, check out forums in your market. It comes down to listening to what problems people have and what destinations they are going to and what roadblocks are stopping them from moving forward. So your job is to remove those roadblocks or help people jump over them so they can keep moving forward. So don't worry too much about the finer details like price, fancy design and so on. Now obviously you want to make it look good. Don't just release something that looks crappy because that's going to have a negative impact on your sales. But don't get stuck in the details. Just do the best you can and put something out there because you'll learn so much from taking action and just seeing what happens because it's so easy for us to get stuck in our mind and start planning and analyzing and living in a dream world because your thoughts are not reality. That's why it's so important to take action and see what happens because you don't know what will happen. You can only assume and usually your assumptions are way off the mark. Now, if you're confused about what kind of products to create and how to create them, just look at someone else in your market and copy their structure. So if they have an ebook, if they're doing well with an ebook, you can release an ebook and fill it in with your own content and your own stuff. So don't copy their ebook, just copy how they're doing things. And for a long time, I was afraid of putting out products because I didn't know what people would think of me and I was just I had those basic fears we all have I was afraid of what people would think of me what if I didn't sell any copies what if I wasn't successful and all of that stuff and after a while I just became so sick of myself that I released a product anyway and I discovered that all of the fears I had were illusions because that's all they are they are thoughts in our heads they are ideas that we choose to believe in. So when you let them be and you don't have to do anything with your fears or thoughts, you can let them be and you can take action anyway and you can challenge your thoughts and see what happens anyway. Because it's only through experimentation that you'll make this work. And then we have point number seven, which is connections or making friends. So start connecting with people earlier or as soon as you possibly can. Because connecting with people doesn't have to be sleazy. It doesn't have to be the typical networking kind of thing that most people have in mind when they think about making friends or making connections. So the way you can do this is simply by helping people out in whatever way you can. So you can send them some traffic from your site by giving them a link, mentioning them, or even interviewing them. And sometimes helping people out just means sending them an email and telling them how much you appreciate their work and how it has helped you take action. Now, why is it so important to make friends? Well, we're social creatures. We do business with people we like. We help people we like. That's just how it is. I'm going to be more likely to help someone that I know compared to someone that I don't know. So don't be afraid to just shoot people an email, tell them whatever you feel compelled to tell them, or even ask for help or guidance. People are willing to help you if you're an action taker because they are so rare. Action takers are almost extinct. Because it's so rare that people just take advice and run with it. The norm is that people maybe contemplate your advice and then they get stuck in their fears and they do nothing. So how can you connect with people? Well, nowadays you have so many different options. You can use social media, you can use email, and 
It just depends on what kind of platform you enjoy using and where people hang out. So simply be yourself. Again, remember point number one, be yourself, be honest. Don't try to manipulate people to promote your site or your products. Just take things naturally because con making connection connections also takes time. We don't just start trusting people right away. It takes time, so don't try to force things. And the way I look at this is that if someone doesn't reply to your email or if they ignore you, then you weren't meant to talk to them. There's no connection there. There's no resonance. So forget about those people and focus on the people that respond to you and that you feel excited about interacting with. And I recommend you start making connections and making friends right now. Even if you don't have a website, you can still start leaving comments, send some emails, keep in touch, help people out in whatever way you can, because this is something that I haven't done much in the beginning. I've always felt like networking or making friends felt sleazy, but again, that was just me being stopped by the ideas I had in my head and the thoughts I chose to believe in. So I started shifting that and now I'm just making friends and having fun online. I'm getting to know people and it's just something I enjoy doing now. And that brings us to point number eight, which is don't be afraid to make mistakes. If you're anything like me, you'll make a lot of mistakes and fail. You'll fail a lot and hopefully you'll learn from your failures and mistakes, which is good. So take action, not when things are perfect, because they'll never be perfect. So take action when you're 60% certain about something. And this was a military rule I heard somewhere, so I don't know if this is true or not. If you're in the military, maybe you can confirm this or let me know if I'm even close here. But basically the rule was that if you're a leader of a group in the military, then you take action when you're 60% certain of something. Because in the military, if you're in combat and you wait until you're 100% certain about something, then you'll most likely die and everyone near you will die. So don't look for perfection. Look for things being good enough, then take action and be willing to make mistakes and fail gloriously because when you take action, you learn so much. Even if you fail completely, you just keep on going, you learn from your failures and that's how you'll succeed so much faster. You'll make progress faster and you'll realize that perfection is an illusion. It's an idea we have in our head. We think that if things are a certain way, then we're guaranteed to succeed, but it doesn't work that way. If you want to go, if you want to guarantee, you have to make mistakes and you have to keep taking action because you are your own guarantee. You have to be willing to move forward. And when you take action and are willing to make mistakes, you will learn to spot your own patterns, how you're always stopping yourself by maybe thinking about what other people will think of you or maybe waiting for clarity because we have the same patterns over and over again. These are the things we've picked up as we've grown up. Maybe we had something happen during childhood or someone kept repeating something to us or maybe we just had parents that were afraid of making mistakes. They were so afraid of challenging this the status quo that they never did anything they truly wanted to do. So just they just settled for mediocrity and that was that. And you learned by looking at how they were living life that you should never step out of the box because bad things will happen. And I'm here to tell you that bad things only happen when you keep a lid on yourself, when you keep a lid on your passions and your excitements. So default to making mistakes, failing gloriously, and just taking action. So if you're just starting out, do your best, but jump in there, take action, start your website, start a blog, 
and just move forward. Because even if you change your mind and you change your website, you can fix things down the road. There's a lot of technical things you can do to move things over. So there's nothing you have to worry about. And you don't have to know how you'll move things over. You just take action, do what you can do right now, and then think about the rest when you cross that bridge if you need to. So if your goal is to be perfect in life and not make any mistakes, you won't learn anything and you'll be miserable because there is no perfection in life. Life will always have challenges because that's how you grow and you can never stop growing as a human being. So the trick is then to change how you relate to yourself and how you relate to challenges. Challenges are there to help you grow and mistakes are nothing but stepping stones to success. These are all ideas and thoughts in our head. So we've learned how to structure everything in our head. We believe that if we make mistakes, then bad things happen. But that's not true because mistakes can happen and good things can happen. So again, think about if you've ever made a mistake and something good came out of it. And if you've ever, ever failed at something and something good came out of, the, out of that. So nothing is as it seems and nothing is as we think. And that brings us to point number nine, which is the big break myth. This is what I call the Oprah effect. So it's trying to get that one guest post on a big blog or get one famous person to talk about you. Because if that were to happen, you would have a successful lifestyle business and everything would be perfect. But it doesn't work that way. A lifestyle business is built over a period of time. So your job is to show up every day and keep putting in the work. This is not about big breaks because big breaks don't exist. Yes, sometimes people get on Oprah and sell a ton of books which launches their career, but usually that's not going to happen. So don't wait for it and don't try to force it. So again, learn what you need to learn and implement. You may get a big break or you may not. You may get a big break when you don't need it anymore. And even if you do get a big break, building a lifestyle business comes down to consistent effort. It comes down to showing up every day and doing the work, improving what you do, facing challenges, solving problems, and moving forward. It's not glamorous, which is why many people start and then give up when they face challenges and don't see amazing progress right away. But if you keep going, the rewards will be amazing. For example, it's taken me several years to build a thriving online business. But today it helps me live the lifestyle I want. It's, it helps me have enough time to spend with my son. It allows my girlfriend to spend my, as much time as she wants with our son because she's a full-time mom and she loves doing that. And all of the work I put in allows me the freedom, the control and time to do what I want, when I want and from where I want. So the rewards are worth it, but it's going to be hard work. And even if you go after the wrong idea or you make a mistake or your passions change, you'll still have learned a lot. So you you can't make any mistakes. The only mistake you can make is if you stay where you are and you do nothing. If you let your fears, insecurities and worries stop you from following your heart. That's the only mistake you can make. And that brings us to point number 10, which is have a plan B, but don't depend on it. So you may need to work part time or even full time until your lifestyle business takes off. So what I did was I quit playing poker, cold turkey, one year. So I started trying to figure this online business thing out in late 2006. And in early 2009, I had enough. I just quit playing poker and I focused all my efforts on building my online business. I had savings in the bank, so 
I was good to go for a few months, but I was willing to give up poker because I wanted to focus all my energy on one project. And that's when I started seeing results. Now, this may feel right to you or it may not. You have to listen to what feels the best for you and what makes sense for you. Because you hear a lot of advice that tells you to, to just go for it, quit your job, fly to Thailand or do something crazy. And that's awesome if it resonates with you. But if it doesn't, then you don't have to do it. So always default to listening to your heart and listening to yourself. Because you know what you want the best. So you have to reclaim your power. And even as you're listening to me now, you have to take what resonates and discard the rest. Because this is your life. You have your own preferences and you know what you want. So don't give away your power by trying to get advice from someone or trying to get someone else to tell you what to do. You have to make your own decisions if you want to be happy and truly fulfilled. No one can tell you what to do. Because sometimes I have people come to me and it's very obvious that they want me to tell them exactly what to do so they can get what they want, so they can be happy. And it doesn't work that way. I can give guidance, I can give tips, I can share my experiences, but ultimately you have to take responsibility and you have to be willing to move forward, make mistakes, own those mistakes, learn from them and keep moving forward. So nothing happens until you reclaim your responsibility because you are the only one that can craft the lifestyle you want and the business you want. So that brings us to the end of our list. So we covered 10 things and I want to quickly summarize all of the things because it can be hard to remember all of this. So we started with number one, which was to be who you are. Because you have a story to tell. And there's a reason you are who you are. There's a purpose behind everything. So share your story and share who you are. Because that's when things will start to change. You are who you are for a reason. And trust yourself and your feelings to know what's going on. Then we looked at number two, which was time. It's going to take time to build a lifestyle business. And you may want to go for quick fixes, but they won't help you. The best shortcut to success is no shortcut at all. So remember that. And then we looked at number three, which was focus. So find one source of information. Find one person you trust that's doing what you want to do. And then follow their advice, get their help and take action. And then we looked at number four, which was to get help. So work with a mentor, a coach, or take a training program that gives you a framework and gives you feedback on your progress. Then number five was not to worry about your niche. If you can drill down and become the expert on growing bananas, then do that. But if you can't, then do your best to find a problem you can solve. Do your best to find the people you help but default to taking action, because when you take action, you'll start figuring out, figuring out who you want to help, who you don't want to help, what you want to do, what you don't want to do, and all that stuff. And then number six was to create a product or service as soon as possible. Because when you create a product, you'll discover if people will buy stuff from you, or if they'll buy what you have to offer. And if they do buy, you can start improving that. You can start adding more value, you can raise the price, and you can start building your business. Then number seven was to make friends. So make connections online because we are social beings. We do business with people we like and we recommend people we like. And number eight was to make mistakes. Because mistakes and failures are simply stepping stones to success. If you try to go for perfection, you'll be miserable and you won't make any progress. So forget about, about all that and just go in with the mindset that you'll make mistakes and you'll learn from those mistakes. And number nine was to forget about the big break. Forget about the Oprah factor. Just focus on 
putting in the work, showing up every day, and doing your best. Because that's what this all comes down to. It's not glamorous, like many people make it out to be. But in the, at the same time, it is glamorous, because it's something you enjoy doing, you're following your passion, you're making a difference in people's lives. So, you're already enjoying what you do, and it's just good stuff. And the last point was to have a plan B. So I say this, but I didn't have a very thought out plan B. I quit playing, playing poker and I figured I could always go back if I needed to. But I quit and I've never looked back. So sometimes you'll need to work full time and sometimes part time. So just work with your circumstances and do what you have to do to start taking action and start moving forward. So that brings us to the end of this podcast episode. I hope you've enjoyed the 10 things we've covered and you've probably noticed that there were a few common themes such as to listen to yourself, to share your story and to take action. Just follow your heart and enjoy what you do. Be aware of the fears and insecurities you have and notice that they are just thoughts and ideas we've picked up somewhere along the way. So always default to moving forward. And right now, think about what the next smallest step is that you can take to move closer to building your lifestyle business and following your passion. And you'll know it's small enough because you feel inspired to take it. So it may just be to brainstorm a few ideas or do some free writing in a journal or it may be to come up with a domain name for your website. So whatever it is, think about it now and then take action after this podcast episode. Or if you're in a car listening to this, then take action after you've finished driving or whatever you're doing. So that's all for this episode. Now, if you enjoyed this episode and if you enjoy the Lifestyle Liberation podcast, I would really appreciate it if you go into iTunes and leave a five-star review because it really helps this podcast reach more people and have a bigger impact. And if you want to know more about me and learn more about how you can turn your passion into a lifestyle business, you can go to wakeupcloud.com which is where you'll find a lot of free articles, a lot of free content that'll help you take action. So that's all for this time. I hope I'll see you in the next episode because there's going to be a lot more goodness coming your way. So this is Henry signing out. Bye for now and have an awesome day.